Hello and welcome back. This video is all about how you can set up Apache Spark on your Windows PC. And for Mac users, I am really sorry, I don't have Mac PC, but I'll be giving you the link to the step-by-step -step procedure of how to install Apache Spark in Mac as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's get started with our Spark installation. So there are some prerequisites that you need to cover first to install Spark in your Windows PC. The first one is you should be having the Java development kit, which is also known as JDK in your system and it should be the version of 8 and above and also you should have the latest version of python so these prerequisites we need to cover and all these links to download your tools i'll be giving in the description below so that it will be easier for you so without further ado let's get started okay so just quickly go through your favorite browser and search for download jdk okay so once you're there go to downloads and you can download any version so i'll be choosing the latest version which is java 19 at the time of shooting this video so go to windows and you have to download the installer file which is .exe so just download okay so once it is download just open that file so just click on next and here i'll highly recommend you to give to extract your java in a specific directory so here we will be giving the change and go to the c drive and here we will create a new folder so in c just create a folder as java then go to the java and here you again have to create a new folder as jdk which is java development kit okay so just select this and this will be your directory for java so click on next and that's it your java installation is successful so you can just close it and then we can jump and install python okay so for installing python just open a new tab and search for python download so just search it and go to python.org website and you can just select the newest version of python because it will not affect your spark installation so just download python 3.11.1 and that's it it's downloaded okay so once you downloaded it just open it and you have to select the add python.exe to the path because it will make so much easier and you don't have to provide your environment variable so just click on install now and there you go your setup was successful so you have covered two prerequisite to install your spark installation so now you can go ahead and install spark so just open the new tab and go to download spark and here you can see the spark.apache.org website so just go to that and here the versions are very important because you have to select a specific Apache Hadoop version which will be compatible with your Spark and Scala. So here we have to select the Hadoop 2.7 version because you have to also install one dependency which is winutils.exe file which is specifically designed for a specific Hadoop version. So according to that you have to select your Hadoop version here and you can select the Spark release as 3.3.1. So at the time of this video, this was 3.3.1, but definitely if you are installing it during your installation, that might be different, but just make sure that you're choosing 2.7. Okay. So once it is done, you can choose on download spark, which will provide you the tar file. So just click on it and just click on this website. Okay. So it is getting downloaded. It's not that huge file, just 261 MBs. So just wait for it to complete. Okay, so once the download is complete, you have to navigate to your downloads folder. So just go to the downloads folder and just select the file and you can go to the C drive and create a new folder here. So I'll just create a new folder named as spark or in smaller case. And here you can just paste the file. And now you have to extract this file because since it's a tar file, you need to extract it to get the access of spark extract here. And that's it. You have extracted your tar file now. So here you can see the bin directory where all the PySpark and Spark shell command scripts are present. And from here you can directly kick off the Spark shell. But first you have to download the winutils first and it should be of the Hadoop version which you have downloaded which is 2.7. So to do that I'll give you a link in the description below. So you have to go to one git directory where all these files are present for their specific versions 
okay so this is the github repository and we can just download our windutils.exe file from here so i'll be giving you this link so you'll not face any issues so just go to the hadoop 2.7.1 go to the bin directory and at the last you will find the windutils.exe so just go to that and just download okay so download is completed so again just go to the file location get the winutils file and then come to c drive and you have to create the new folder named as hadoop because that is a dependency to kick off spark on your pc so just give hadoop and in hadoop the bin directory and inside bin directory you can paste that file so i think the name is this messed up delete that one and okay so we have hadoop set up and also apache spark in the spark folder so you should be having the java folder and inside java there is jdk and here inside you have the java installed then you should be having the hadoop folder inside hadoop there is bin and winutils and the last but not least you should be having the spark folder so here inside spark we have the tar file and here in bin directory we have all the commands so to verify it quickly just go to the command prompt so first one would be check the java version so give java version okay and you can see we have the latest version then you can give like python version and there you go you have 3.10 version but now you have to set the paths for your spark and hadoop and that you are going to do in the edit environment variable setting so just go to windows and search for environment variables so this is what it looks like edit the system environment variables click here and go to the environment variables option and that's it so here you have to create your environment variables now so just follow this very carefully because any small mistake will give you an error and that is a very headache because these small mistakes can waste so much time and it did for me too and to simplify your life i'll be giving all this part directly to you in the description below so you can just copy paste it and avoid any confusion okay so to add the new variable click on new the first one you will create is java home so just give like java underscore home and that lies in the c directory so to avoid the mistakes you can just go to the browse directory part. so just go to browse directory then just find where you have installed the java so just we have installed it in the c drive so just navigate to the c and here you will find the java folder and inside java we have the jdk folder and then click ok there you go we have the c java and jdk just click ok that will be the first step then you have to add the hadoop home so as you have downloaded that winutils file just you have to create a new one give like hadoop underscore home and again browse directory navigate to the c then come to hadoop and you have to give the hadoop here click ok and click on ok so you have set up the java home and the hadoop home till now now you have to set up the spark home so again you have to go to the new one and give like spark underscore home and give like browse directory then again navigate to the c where we have extracted the tar file go to the spark inside spark we have the our file and click ok that's it give ok and you're done you have set up spark home as well and for separate side you also have to do the pyspark home and you have to give it to the python.exe file so again just click on new one give like pyspark underscore home browse the directory and here just find the python so as we haven't chose the specific directory for it you have to go to your c drive then go to the user and in user find your username here just go to the app data then give to local then you have to find the programs file so you go to programs and here you have the python so just go to python 3.11 and you have to select the python 3.11 because that is the version we have just installed so just click on ok but now again after the python 3.11 you have to give slash and give like python.exe which is the executable file for python 
so that is a mandatory step so just click on okay and that's it you have the hadoop home java home pyspark home and the spark home setup but you have to also provide the path for it so just go to path in the system variables and click on edit so here are the different paths so here you have to provide the java spark hadoop all the paths and their bin directories so as you can see we have the java home setup to the bin directory so now the same process we have to follow for spark and hadoop so again you have to go to new give like hadoop underscore home percent sign slash bin because the win utils files is present there again you have to give new the spark home the sign slash bin that's it just click on ok and you're good to go so just click on ok and ok and that's it that is you have to follow to install apache spark so to verify your installation just open the command prompt and as we have already checked the java python we just have to kick off our spark shell so to submit your command give like spark dash shell so this will enable the spark shell hit enter it will take some time because it's a first boot and there you go you have the spark running on your windows pc and you have opened the scala shell so here you can see the version which we have downloaded 3.3.1 and the scala version is 2.12 so that's it that is all you have to do to install spark in your pc but that is not enough we are not going to use spark shell to write our application we we should be having some id installed in our system so that we are going to see in a next video but as you can see this is a scala shell but we are going to use python for our full course so what we'll do is we will again verify if the pyspark is running fine because python we already have installed so pyspark should also run fine so just give like quit okay and now just type like pyspark and hit enter and there you go the pyspark is also running fine okay so to quickly verify it we can just submit the print command and in this case just print the spark version so spark dot version and there you go you got the 3.3.1 which means that pyspark shell is also running fine and to visualize your spark application you can just see the web ui so just click on that and go to your favorite browser and in new window just open that and as you can see here you can monitor your apache spark application so as you can see this is the home this will be like the event timeline so once you submit your job it will show the status as succeeded which are failed or or any running job on your cluster and there are different sorts of stuff you can monitor in this so you can go to environment and see what are the spark properties which we have already set up so we haven't mess around it and here you can also see the java home which is again in the in our c drive and also you can find the stages for all the jobs so since we don't have the jobs we don't have any data here you can go to storage again nothing is here and you can go to executors so as you can see you got a very holistic view of your applications and you can monitor your jobs and see how it is running under the hood and processing your data in a parallel way so this was all about setting up apache spark in a system but in the next lecture let's set up a ide so we will be installing the anaconda distribution which already comes with all the stuff you need so you can either use the jupyter notebooks as well as the spider ide so we are going to explore both of these options so don't worry so whatever works for you that is fine if you already have pycharm running then you can set up your spark application in the pycharm as well so i'll be giving you all these links in the description below as well as the environment variables which we need to pass to able to kick off your spark so if you face any difficulties let me know in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as possible i hope you like this lecture so please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching